Lots of the beautiful light uh, that uh, we were afforded uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, we made our way down onto the uh, Mullet Peninsula, which is a very large uh, peninsula. It takes about 20, 25 minutes to drive uh, from Bell Mullet here to the southern tip. And this area is, it, it's uh, wild, barren, uh, it's granite strewn. There's uh, these granite rocks everywhere, you know, kilometers of it, right the way across the southern tip of the Mullet Peninsula. Uh, it was about 10 years ago that I came down here looking for a, a snowy owl, uh, which was an annual visitor. He came here for three or four years uh, on the trot and I walked across. I can, it brings back fond memories. Well, not so fond memories, actually, because I walking across the, the granite fields here, as you can see, they're bleak and empty. I saw a puff of smoke coming from uh, behind a rock and it was a, a, a middle-aged man with a cap on, a tweed jacket, and he said to me, I suppose you'd be looking for the owl. And I says, I would, in, with all my enthusiasm. And he says, I'm afraid you have missed it. So uh, here I am again, this time uh, looking for a landscape photograph. Um, and the options, to be honest, are quite limited here on the southern end of the mullet. And that's chiefly because you've got the, the mass of Ackle and the, the, the Ackle cliffs in the distance here. You can see them in shock because they're covered in, uh, in, in grey, in mist uh, and in cloud and it's drizzling here at the moment. Um, but what you can see in the background are there's a few god beams off there in the distance at the Nefin uh, mountain range which runs uh, south from the Mullet on the mainland all the way down uh, to where Ackle Island joins the mainland as such. And that's where we'll be heading probably later on uh, today. Now yesterday evening uh, there was a little bit of colour in the sky. And we found beach at a place called Galosh, um, which is li literally a mile over this way and we spent the night there and, uh, and at sunset I just photographed the sand, a little bit of sea and you couldn't really even make out the Inishki Islands offshore. They're quite flat and elongated uh, so it's hard to get them with a wide angle lens or indeed with a, with a, with a 50 mil or anything, uh, a, a telephoto lens. Uh, but I enjoyed my hour or so on that beach, just snapping away and trying to catch a little bit of movement in the water. Um. And uh, quite honestly, I came here to find uh, two buff-breasted sandpipers, North American wading birds, and I had no luck. And I was surprised to find this wonderful uh, rock formation. Um, so I, I switched the long lens for the wide angle. And, uh, and as you see on the video here, uh, this, this is uh, opened to 24 millimeters. And again, I've taken the, the 15 stop out and uh, took a four minute exposure. Uh, two, two exposures, uh, one a little darker and one a little brighter with the composition moved slightly to the left. And I might just put the two compositions up. They're, they're very slightly different. Um, but the attraction here is that it's like a lion's head uh, rock at the end of the headland here. And uh, the waves are catching it nicely. It's the middle of the day but there's soft light, um, so it's quite nice, and I'm absolutely delighted with the, with, with the, uh, with the resultant image. Um, the rocks and the way the rocks are lured to the right of frame here is just beautiful and provides a nice, simple uh, foreground uh, to that wonderful background. And the only thing I'd say about the background here, or, or should I say that the main subject, is it's quite dark 
when compared to the foreground and compared to the sky and the sea. And, um, and I think I've just got away uh, with exposure. There's some uh, dark areas that are close to black, but not quite there. There's no blinkies on the camera. So delighted with that. And we're off now. Our next stop uh, should be Ballycroy uh, National Park and then on to uh, Ackle. So We travelled south from uh, Belmullet uh, along the uh, West Mayo coast through Ballycroy National Park uh, which I found really impressive, uh, it surprised me and I had not been there before. Uh, I'd like to go back, particularly at this time of the year, uh, it's September and the bogland grasses and heather uh, look very inviting, you know, lovely. Uh, I think the word saffron was described or used in the interpretive centre there. There's a lovely little walk around the back of the interpretive centre which gives a nice uh, feel for the place. But it's a wild open countryside without any forestry and therefore it would make lovely minimalist type uh, images in good light. Um, so um, if you're a landscape photographer uh, it might be a place uh, worth visiting if you haven't visited before and I'd love to go back and uh, spend a couple of days there in another life. Um, but we've made our way onto uh, Ackle Island and in Ireland um, County Mayo is, is really uh, synonymous with uh, Ackle Island as a holiday destination. There's many holiday homes uh, throughout the island and it kind of doesn't ruin it but it certainly takes away from the scenery here. Um, I struggled this morning, we stayed in Dulock, uh, a little beach underneath the second largest mountain here, Sleeve Moor. And I spent an hour and a half really struggling. I didn't get much of an image, but I'll put it up there anyway so you can have a gawk at it. Uh, but I'm here at, uh, we've started driving the, the Atlantic Drive um, uh, on Ackle as opposed to the Wild Atlantic Way, even though it's, it's on the Wild Atlantic Way. That's a little bit confusing, but not to worry. Um, and we've come across this lovely scene, which I think is well known. I've seen postcards of this scene here as the coastland and the little rock outcrops. Uh, quite a lot of them. Um, you know, fade away into the distance there and into the, into the mountains um, at the far end of uh, Ackle Island. And that's where our destination is tonight. So I'm looking forward to maybe a sunrise shot on Keene Beach uh, tomorrow morning. Well, we've proceeded out to the most western tip, um, most accessible western tip by road, which is uh, Keane Bay, and it's a magical uh, uh, bay enclosed by cliffs on all sides. And uh, this morning for sunrise, you'll see the uh, highlights are blown out here, and that's the sun just coming up um, into the bay as such. It rose about 10 minutes ago or so. Um, and the composition that I'm going for this morning is very simple. It's a standard composition. Uh, it's been taken many times before and it's been painted many times before. Um, going right the way back to the 19th century, uh, I've seen uh, watercolour uh, paintings of this little cottage. So it's an absolute pleasure uh, to be here and to try to take, capture my own take on it. The midges are out in force um, and even though I have repellent on, I'm still getting eaten alive. But sure, there you go, isn't it worth it? Worth a bit of pain. 
Um, so the composition is very uh, simple. Um, I've actually changed the position of my camera. I had it up extended high. So as the, uh, the roof of the little cottage um, was uh, separated from the mountains above, you'll see there that it's, the two of them are joined together at the moment. So I just wanted to get that little bit of separation and to get the stream entering the frame on the lower right hand side, leading the uh, eye into the actual uh, image um, with the cottage uh, sitting on just left of center. And I managed to get the whole bay in, so a, a little bit of the right and a little bit of the left, and then the sun coming up. Now I had uh, obviously issues with uh, dynamic range, um, you had a very uh, shaded foreground and a very bright background. Um, I kind of steer clear of using um, graduated filters because I found even a little bit of dirt on the uh, 14 to 24, the large filters, uh, shows up badly. So uh, I've bracketed and I'm going to have to work those uh, images well in uh, Photoshop. Uh, so I need to blend those two uh, together. Thank you. 